Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's R.C. Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast, alongside of, well, the guy that has the second most touchdown receptions in Texas Tech history. Of course, that is Lyle Leong. And this is a different podcast than usual. Typically, on these podcasts, you know, we'd have fun. And we're going to have fun on today's podcast, but it, it would be a lot more lighter, right? Um, obviously, this podcast comes out after the tragic news of the passing of the best football coach in Texas Tech program history um, and Mike Leach. Obviously, Lyle's on the podcast, and there's no better guy in the Texas Tech media community than Lyle Leong to talk about the impact that Mike Leach not only had on him, but Red Raider Nation, that football program, and really college football as a whole. So in today's podcast, I know I'm the one where I've gotten message on here, Lyle, before where it's like, RC, shut up. It's like, I, I'm going to shut up today. This is going to be all Lyle. But first and foremost, man, I want to say uh, I've been thinking about you a lot the past 24, 36 hours and a lot of your brothers on that football team. I can't imagine what y'all have been going through. So just know that my thoughts and prayers are with all you guys and really heartfelt condolences um, to not only you guys, but I think even you would say this too, more importantly, his immediate family, his wife and kids and grandkids and everything like that. But honestly, Lyle, man, I I think on today's podcast, I think it's more than fitting to hear some of these great stories that only you and guys that were in the, lo, those locker rooms and those battles with you, right, can tell yeah. about Mike Leach. So wherever you want to take this, my guy, platform's all you. Hey, man, I appreciate it, man. And uh, like I said, I think the uh, the coolest part about all this is kind of seeing like the the amount of people that he impacted through Twitter and you know you know the the people that I play with the coaches you know Link and you know Eric Morris just got a uh, uh, job in North Texas congrats uh, big bro um, and and just some of the guys so but it was it was just cool to see other coaches that he's inspired that he's um, that he's done stuff for that he hasn't even. Um, you know, met it's just through the influence of what he's done in the game. And like I said, everybody, you know, does mesh. Everybody does shallow. Everybody does uh, a part of it. So it is just it's it's uh, really cool to see the impact and and just sit back and realize like, dang, man, I got a chance to to be around this guy every day. I had a couple friends. I was like, man, I just wanted to have dinner with him once. And, uh, you know, I got to spend four years with them and uh, you know, it, it, he's, he'd do this for anybody, but, you know, call, text, he's going to pick up and talk to you, might talk to you for two hours, but, you know, he's going to, he's going to take that time to talk to you, but it was, it's, it's just really cool. And then also just to be a part, I've been in a couple, uh, group text messages, you know, with, like I said, Link and, and, uh, Eric Morris and Graham and Seth Latrell and, you know, I, I don't feel like I'm worthy to be in those uh in the chat sometimes with those guys, but it's still cool to be a part and, and be a part of that family uh family tree. So I think um, you're definitely worthy of it, my guy. I I, I think yeah. your stats speak for themselves. I know you're you're the humble one on this podcast. I'm the one that likes to gloat, but damn it, you deserve it in this <laughs> regard for sure, my guy. I appreciate it, but man, it was it was cool and uh you know just the last couple of days talking to people. Um, you know, it, it, a lot of people, they want to they want to hear stories and uh, I enjoy getting to tell them and, and just kind of reminiscing and, and kind of thinking, uh, you know, on, on all that stuff that you got going on. Thank you, brother. All the stuff that you got going on as far as, um, you know, other people's stories that are similar and uh, all that that good stuff. But like I said, it was just really cool from that standpoint to just see uh, all the um impact that he's had and you know if you ask a lot of these cats stories about leech like all these stories are not going to be about football so i think that's that's what makes it even cooler when you sit back because you think of mike leach you think man this guy's a football guy and he is you know he's a creator of something that everybody uses even in the nfl is moving more towards that uh and, it, and it's because of him but uh it's just cool to see the impact on all that stuff and and kind of, you know, just be lucky to be in that, in that, uh, in that, in that tree and, and be a part of that. But um, I was talking to uh, this guy earlier today and, and he uh, wanted to know, like, what was, you know, Leech was Leech, uh, you know, a lot of people call Leech weird and uh, he's not really weird. He's just smarter than everybody. <laughs> and, you know, the, the, the moment you talk to him and realize it, some stuff you're like, man, this dude is not very smart. 
And when you get home, you know, you'll realize, um, oh, okay, he, he that's what he was talking about. It's just over. <laughs> yeah. Here. So, you know, it's a, it, it's, it's cool to, to hear people say that, that just see him from afar, but we used to love, I know the guys used to love it pregame and, you know, the one he got famous for is, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the eggs and the yes, yes, you know, the pig. What he say? Uh, which one's more committed? You yeah, know? the chicken and the uh, the chicken and the the pig one. Yeah, yeah, the chicken and the pig. And, and uh, I never forget we were playing at Texas when he gave that speech. And like I said, a lot of times he gave speeches that you know people didn't get till halftime, if that you know. And then one <laughs> yeah. person would get it, you know, be like, you know what, he was talking about this, and and so like he he so his his mind is so like above um you know his mind is so above like he would give a pregame speech and it take a hundred people to have time to figure it out and so uh it, it was just greatness to be a, a part of that and hear the pregame speeches I love pregame speeches not because they ever pump me up like you know like I love Leach but never once did he pump me up for a game time it's well you never knew it was coming next right like that was yeah. probably the intriguing part it's like what's those game, uh, those brain brain games? Like every, yeah. every game is a brain game, and um, like I said, you know, uh, I love my brothers, but there's a lot of dummies on the team, and so you know, some of them never got it. But um, <laughs> for for half of us, some of us got it at halftime. I'm probably a third quarter, fourth quarter guy uh, when it came through my mind. But I, you that's know, reasonable though. At least you yeah, got it. I, I can't give myself after the game. I'm a little smarter than some of the folks on the squad. But uh, you know, it was it was one of those things that was uh awesome every week I'm just like man no telling what this cat's gonna talk about and you know just also the way he uh you know he treated everybody equally and that's what made him you know the best to my probably my favorite story sorry crab I love you I gotta tell it but um that's when I realized like you know he was uh one of those guys that he's gonna be for everybody treat everybody the same whether you're good I was a freshman that's I think we're like midway crab was killing the game you know leading the NCA in yards and we got in trouble leading the stuff. world in yards yeah yeah leading the world in yards and uh we got in trouble and crab was going slow on up downs and I'll never forget you know Leach looked over and looked over at crab and he said hey crab tree you get your effing fat ass up and you get your effing fat ass back down and like that to me was like the greatest story like that was the greatest thing that ever happened to me because it was just funny you know, like a guy that I was like, this dude would never get in trouble. We could do whatever he wants. That was the first person that he got on to, you know, and it just speaks volumes on on, on him. You know, he's like, I'll take all your trophies and pack them up and send you back to Dallas Carter. You know, and it, it, it sent, you know, and he probably wouldn't say that now with the transfer portal, but I mean, he probably would, honestly, but. Why not? <laughs> yeah, for real. It just showed the younger cats like myself, you know, um, you know, like, hey, anybody can go. And and that's, you know, I think that's kind of the the mentality McGuire is kind of bringing back and why kids want to, you know, want to play for him. For me, you know, he took a chance on a kid that four Texas schools told me, no, that wasn't good enough. And I wasn't. What's that old saying you always tell me? He took a kid, a shot on a kid that was six foot, 145 pounds, soaking yeah. wet from Abilene, Texas. From Abilene, Texas, man. And I. Yep. And I was like, you know, and Tech was the last place that we talked about earlier. You know, we always talked, but, you know, growing up, it was always Texas A&M. It was always Texas. Um, then the the games that they did show was Baylor and TCU. You know, Tech was a rare, you know, I think the only time I saw Tech play back in the day was like Ricky Williams versus Ricky Williams. Uh, you know, yeah. they kind of pumped that thing up. And I think that's the first time I ever saw Tech. And I was like, yeah, definitely not going there. And so, yeah. Um, for him to come in and, and uh, take me in and other people, you know, even like Eric Morris, love Eric Morris, but he's five, six, one sixty, And so he's probably the only person I was bigger than on the team. And, uh, and uh, you know, he turned out to be a fantastic, fantastic player and, and even a, a better coach. Um, but um, like I said, it's just one of those things, man. Like he, he came in, I'll never forget when I first got recruited by that man, he, uh, actually caught me at the – I was high, high jump. My coach told me I didn't have to do spring ball if I made it to state in high jump. So um, my sole goal was to make it to state, not to win. So I didn't have so to do So you didn't have to do spring ball. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have to do spring football. I hated spring football. I would have jumped 7-11 if I didn't have to do spring <laughs> football. Uh, but I, I'll never forget the first time I met him, I uh, was sleep on the high jump. 
Matt, my coach, went somewhere. I laid down for a minute, was sleep, and woke up to mic over my face. Hey, what the hell are you doing? I'm like, oh, man. You know, because he had they had come to see Potts. You know, Potts is a pretty big recruit. Yep. So, I mean, we had Michigan, Ohio State, Texas, Texas and them. Like, everybody was coming through there. But, you know, no one ever came to see me. So, I'm living my best life just – you know, chilling and, and he invited me to a camp. He's like, you know, I hope you got more energy than this to to come play for me. And I was like, shoot, I do. I actually was just stretching and meditating. Um, you know, I know Mamba he, mentality before it was a thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I talked to Kobe, you know, me and Kobe got the same birthday. So, you know, it's kind there of a spiritual thing, you know, but, uh, you know, invited me to a camp and uh, ended up going. And, and uh, remember a dude named Dion Beasley? Name sounds familiar. Anyway, he's like a five-star cornerback. Uh, ended up going to Texas. Did you cook him? Yeah, at, at the camp. Nice. You know, Atta like, boy. Hey, you stay and you stay. And and uh, he gave me five five routes to run. And I, I caught the ball five times. And then he offered me a scholarship. So uh, there was it was awesome to see, you know, a dude that that believed in 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 someone that no one else. You get told no so many times, like nah. Nah, you can't do it. And uh, you know, for me, I was I wasn't my goal was not like I didn't grow up saying, Man, I want to go play division one football. Uh, you know, my goal was I, I really want to play basketball. And um, like I said, I played football because I played my whole life. I grew up with my friends. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, to get the opportunity to go play for him and you know, not realizing he's Mike Leach, and then you know, next thing I know, he's yeah. on 60 minutes. I'm like, dang, this dude was just. I watched right? that thing all day yesterday, man. I'm, I'm not even lying to you. I probably watched that interview like different snippets of it, different variations, right? Like at least four or five times, man. It was wild. It was wild to see it again. Yeah, I could like I, you know, it's kind of like that's the type of stuff, you know, like now looking back and seeing like, dang, this dude is like, you know, like my Twitter line literally was, you know, leech. yeah, leech, leech, leech. Like I tweeted, you know praying for him yesterday it was like seventy thousand impressions you know and i'm just like wow man that's that's crazy you know i average uh and i probably average one thousand <laughs> you know impressions. you're selling yourself short again man <laughs> i was like 70 and that's just you know uh that's just a, a credit to to him and everything he's done but the way he treated people too like you know like People don't don't get that um, he, he'll talk to anybody, whether they're on the street, whether you're playing. I, I know they had that bowl game when they played the Alamo Dome. I think it was at Washington State at the time. Um, Gardner my Minshew, yep. coach, Yeah, my head coach wanted to go. Um, so I called him. I said, hey, Mike, can we come through? He's like, yeah, of course, bring him. So my head coach was sitting there. Mike got his little, you know, his little play call sheet. And he's like, man, I want to see his play call sheet. And I was like, go ask him. He's like, nah, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to ask him, man. I, he's in the middle of practice. I was like, dude, you sure it wasn't a decoy? Yeah, for like real. the one at Oklahoma. Are you sure? <laughs> Them dummies should have known better. It's only this big. They should have known <laughs> after the first three plays. And and you know, and I was like, I'm not gonna do it. You know, I'm like, either you go talk to him or you're never gonna find out. But I'm not going over there to initiate it. And he ends up going over there and leech, you know, middle of practice, calling plays. Uh, tells his other dude, hey, call plays for me, and explains his sheet to him for 50 minutes and you know that's just the type of Man. dude he was and and like I said I don't think people understand the um like I said how smart he was so when you see a sheet like this you may see six plays but like I said a lot of that has options built in that he knows that he's you know and I think you know for you young play callers out there um you know there's a thing called tagging and, and you could tag whatever you want you know but uh, it's it's tagging those and being uh, kind of specific with those tags. I think a lot of people, they, they want to get out there and see Leach and say, well, Leach is only doing four plays. So, hell, I am too. Uh, but people got so much more complex. Than yeah, that. it's not like that. They got, so. they got that, that. I mean, to dumb it down a little bit, obviously it's not this simple. But when you see, you know, Patrick Mahomes doing this or something like that, that's yeah. a tag. Like that means yeah. something. And like, it could be as simple as him doing two fingers and the wide receiver sees, oh, okay, he's doing it with two fingers. I need to do this now. Like that's a byproduct of coach Leach and everything right. like that. Like that, that that's him. Right. And that's, that's the thing they don't, you know, it's just, it's things to it, you know, as a, as a, you know, as a caller too, we're there 24 seven, you mm -hmm. know, those guys, we, we got there in uh, probably the June 1st 
You know, we get a week off in June, we get a week off in July. We start in August. We're there. These guys got a bowl game. So um, they're leaving Christmas Eve. They get two weeks off, and then they're leaving Christmas Eve. They'll get another two weeks off after the bowl game, and they're back to off season. So, um, you know, that's the thing people don't understand about this offense. It's simple, but these guys are spending 24-7 on this for a year. When you have a guy that's done this for a year, you know, you go to class. You go to you go in the morning workout, go to class, go to meetings, go to football, watch yeah. football, you know. Um, it's a one of those things that you can be complicated and simple at the same time. So I think uh, that's one of those things. I, I love going to clinics and, you know, uh, last clinic I went to, Sonny Dykes was talking about it. And I just love to Part see of his tree. Yeah. I love to see people write it down because it's, it's, it sounds good when they say it. And, uh, but you know, it's not that simple. And, and so, like I said, just to be a part, like you said, with that tree, you know, Dana, you got, uh, it's Seth, the best tree in football Sonny, ever. He has to have, I mean, it, it's it, but like, cause head coaches, right. He has to, I, I, underneath. I, w- I was literally talking about that with uh, some friends yesterday and they were bringing up, you know, Andy Reed and all this stuff. I'm like, if we're strictly looking at this from a everywhere football perspective, Mike Leach is unmatched. He's unmatched, unmatched because you have to think about the things that he implemented that Andy Reid now uses that trickle down to his disciples on this tree, right? But just the tree itself, if we're strictly talking about Mike Leach, you got an NFL coach in Cliff Kingsbury. You got a coach at Tennessee now in Josh, Josh Heifel, right? Lincoln Riley. I mean, we're talking about major power five coaches here. And that tree didn't even include the head coaching ranks of Eric Morris, who I thought it was super fitting yesterday on the day of his death. Um, that Eric Morris got announced. It almost felt like a, I, I, I don't know the word for it, but it just felt like it even made um, all those words that you were talking about on social media, right? Where everybody was just, all the tributes, man. It was so right. great to see. And then a guy that kind of like you, right? Like you guys beat the odds. Like y'all weren't supposed to be where y'all were supposed to be, but Mike Lee put you in a position and helped you get to this position. Um, and y'all both know that, like you, you're very open about it. But to see that happen on a day where obviously the worst thing that can happen to him happens, but everybody is giving those tributes and showing exactly what he means to college football. I thought it was just super cool to see um, Eric Morris get that job in the state of Texas too, um, which was super cool to have him back. But yeah, man, I mean, I I think the only thing I want to add in this, and then I want to get into more stories. Um, I've told you this off air. Um but I'll openly say it again on the podcast, like your team and your era at Texas tech, like made me fall in love with college football. Like if anybody goes back on the channel here and listens to the remembering Mike Leach video, like I'm visibly and audibly like emotional, like, cause I was thinking about it. Like I remember that Crabtree game. I remember where I was and I remember my friend who I was sitting next to. And I was just like, I'm in man. Like, I'm in. And I remember watching every game y'all had while Graham was there, while Crab was there, while you were there, right? Until, obviously, the debacle that went down. And we don't have to talk about that because that's just so far down the totem pole on Mike Leach and how great he really was. But, like, that's the era of football that made me fall in love with it. And I think we can look back at it. And Mike Leach and his time at Texas Tech revolutionized the game of football more than – and I don't say this saying, I'm not saying this lightly more than anyone in the history of football. And I don't think that that's like a hyperbole or anything. Go look at the NFL, go look at college football, go look at high school football, shoot, go look at middle school football. Mm -hmm. Everybody runs some kind of air raid concept. And if they don't, they're lying to you, right? Like it's (laughs) that simple. Right. Yeah. And where did that maybe not originate from, but where did they get the blueprint for it from? Mike Leach. And you guys were the ones that I think, you know, it was slowly getting out there. But those years that you were on campus with Crab, Graham, all of those guys, Hamby, right? Like y'all were the ones that I think when we look back at it in the Mike Leach era and his time as a coach revolutionized the game of football in a way that I know you won't give yourself credit for, but I think a lot of people should give y'all credit for in the sense of, yeah, it wasn't all y'all. Like y'all weren't the only ones doing it, but y'all perfected it. And y'all were the standard for everybody. Hey, 
we have to get here. And if we get here, we're unbeatable. But the thing is, is Michael Crabtree's don't grow on trees. No pun intended. Yeah. Graham Harrell's don't grow on trees. You know, Ly- you know, Lyle Leong's don't grow on trees, right? Like people that buy into this system don't grow on trees. And I think it's a testament first and foremost to you guys, but also to Mike Leach to know you guys well enough to, like you said, Crabtree, get your big fat ass up. Like, <laughs> oh, like that, that makes something click for you guys. Right. Where it's like, oh, if right. I'm messing up, uh, I mean, if Crabtree's messing up, like, oh, he's going to get on my ass if I mess up. That's the best player on the planet or yeah. in college football, right? So I don't know, man. I, I think that that was just my favorite thing to see yesterday was just everybody's stories, whether it was media members, just casual fans, players. Um, it was it was, it was, was just so cool to see, man. Uh, but let's get back to you. No one wants to hear me talk about Mike Leach. Um, they want to hear you talk about Mike Leach. So I don't want to ask you your favorite Mike Leach story because I think everybody's going to ask you that. But – I want to ask you the most interesting moment that you had with Mike Leach. Like it could be off the field, on the field. Obviously the one where you first met him, that's pretty interesting. Um, But one where you look back on and it's like, hey, that's not like the biggest moment I had with him, but it's probably the one where people will go, what the, you know? Yeah, no, I do. I do have a good one. And I do want to say, because I think you hit that. You know that the the nail on the head, as they say, too, is is that's one thing that the air raid system people constantly don't understand. Like you know, it goes hand in hand. Um, I would never score nineteen touchdowns if I did not play in the air raid offense. But if the air raid offense didn't have me in there, they wouldn't have scored nineteen touchdowns. There's been two people that has done that. So I think it goes hand in hand, and I, I have that argument with people all the time. It's you know, what's the difference? It's it's not the system. Everybody can run the system, but you still have to have the players. And that's the thing, Coach Leach, you know, he found those players. And I don't think – I think Crab was a four-star. Maybe Graham was a four-star. But uh, Louis Vasquez has maybe been a four-star. But other than that, we were all three and below. I don't even think I had a star. So um, the fact that he found guys like that, brought them in, and, and you know, uh, I had told somebody earlier, it, it, I couldn't fail because he believed in me. Like, I could not let that man down. I know that's how most of our teammates feel, you know, to to look around at, you know, rivals popped up. And, you know, back in the day, I remember growing up, I mean, yeah, man, I'm on my seventh offer. You know, I'm at Texas Tech, like, uh, I have zero offers. I'm trying to get one from here. So This man uh, woke me up on a track mat. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> I heard you're pretty good. Come to my camp. I'm there, Mike. I'm there. Uh, so I, I think that goes hand in hand on that. But probably my most interesting story is I, I lived across the street uh, from, uh, you know, the stadium at the center and uh, Leach got into riding bikes with our, uh, you know, one of the greatest men I know, too. His name is Aaron uh, uh, Uzel. We called him the warden. Uh, he was one of our strength coaches with Benny, but one of the greatest guys I've ever known. Uh, but anyways, he got those dudes. He owns a, a bike shop and he got them riding the real deal bikes, not the mountain bikes, the speed bikes where they're going 10 miles. And Leach was getting to the point where he's going like five to 10 miles a day. Um, and and I did. Is that how he broke his elbow? Yes. On um, one of those were the flat tire incident on campus? Yes. Okay. It wasn't a Bobby Petrino incident. Thank God. Yeah, um, I know. That's right. But, you know, <laughs> Let's not talk yeah. about that. You know, that happened literally two miles away from my house in Arkansas growing up. I'm not kidding you. Um, <laughs> but I remember the ambulances and stuff. Uh, but OK, sorry. Yeah. Digress, digress, digress. No, you all good. And so anyways, they're riding bikes. And, and so one day I'm walking to practice and it was that in- incident. Uh, I was actually walking. I saw Mike coming back and I saw his tire go forward. I saw him fall off. I saw him hit his elbow. And then he fell on the ground. He kind of looked at me. I looked at him. And then his tire rolled in slow motion and landed right at my foot. So I'm thinking to myself, like, do I pick up this tire? Do I act like I didn't see Mike? Do I go help Mike up? I'm like, I don't know, because I don't want to get cussed out. You know what I'm saying? I know I don't want to laugh, but I don't know. Like, you know, I feel like if I take that tire and be like, Mike, you good? Like, he's going to be like, get out of my face. I feel like if I walk off, Tomorrow morning at five, I'm gonna be there for punishment. And I feel like if I have to <laughs> slap my hand down. So um that was probably the most interesting story because I felt like we looked at each other and it probably was two seconds, but I swear it was about 30 seconds of just like <laughs> making eye contact. And it where was like, that I, on campus? Uh it happened like right uh right in front of the field, the the field our field house. 
Oh, the bubble that popped. Yeah. So no, on that curve no, on the, right there on the, on the other the curve on the other side in front of the stadium. Oh, so on the university side. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. even worse. People could see them. I uh, know. And so <laughs> I just it took everything. Like I'm anybody that knows me knows like I'm I'm a jokester. I'm a I'm a huge huge jokester. So like it took everything in my power not to laugh. Because like I said, I just know what this man is capable of in a good way. But I, I know I couldn't, you know. So I ended up just kind of standing there and I was just like, You good? And he just said, Yep. And and I and I well, you know, he stood up, he had his arm like this. And I was like, You need help? Nope. And I just walked on and acted like I didn't tell a soul. I didn't tell anybody. I just saw Mike fall off his bike. Uh, you know, I think the ambulance ended man. up coming. I, I I'm not I'm not gonna lie to you. I I, I probably would have laughed and I would have taken the punishment. No, bro. I, I was one of those kids <laughs> that got punished on the daily. And we also got punished as a position group. So anybody that knows football knows that receivers are the worst group when it comes to oh. getting in trouble. The worst and DBs. Group. And DBs. Yeah, and one of the two. It, it's it's one of those two. The, 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 and like, there's that old uh, saying like where like the, the prima donnas or wide receivers and stuff like that. It's like, no. It, it, I think Patrick Mahomes said it best on that Travis Kelsey podcast. He was like, what is the hardest position to play in the NFL? It's D. DB. It, it's it's not close. It's DB because they can't touch you, but they also have to stay in front of arguably some of the greatest athletes in the world. Right. Yeah. And, and it's and like tackles and yeah. get off screens and yeah. go against linemen. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, and they have to make, and they have to make sure that they're in the proper place and no different schemes and just little tactical things like, Oh, he went off his left foot. That means he's going right. Right. Like right. just little things. And uh, I was like, thinking about that after he said it, I was like, you know, I obviously knew wide receivers and DBs. They get a little cocky sometimes. I would probably too, but I thought about it and I was like, that's why uh, DBs, even when there's a ball like throwing 50 yards over their head, they're like nothing. Right. It's like, right. bro, you had nothing to do with it unless your breath goes that high. But like, other than that, good for you, my guy. I guess you were kind of there, but you deserve yeah. it. And that's it. That's it. You just dropped the gym, not even knowing to these young coaches, to these young receivers. Um, like I said, I actually got that from Crab. Is um, you know, the little stuff. I, I knew when I went out there, especially my senior year, I, I finally got it, understood. I knew coverages. I knew what foot was for it. I knew what hand was for it. I knew hand motions on what they were going to do, you know, because Crab always talked about that and, and knowing. And, like, I got to the point where I knew, and they're like, man, how do you never get jammed? It's because I know, for me as a small guy, I need to know when they're going to jam. I need to know from the 20 in, he loves to jam. When he has his right foot exactly. up, he starts spinning his hands. And and so it allowed me to always be one step ahead. So you dropped the – that's a extremely huge gym uh, that you dropped um, on, on them young coaches and young receivers, man. And um, talking about punishment, man, we had a thing called the Tower of London. Um, I don't know if Mike invented it or who invented it, but it was uh, straight from the devil's mouth. Uh, uh, or what was yours? Mind. We had something in high again. Yours is way probably worse than mine, uh, just because you know college. Um, but we had something called the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. It's, what did you do? Tower of London was you start at the front of Texas Tech. Uh, you run around the school, and it may be at every light pole you got fifty up downs. At every tree you got a hundred oh. push ups. And we get down to the basketball stadium and bear crawl down and bear crawl up the where they go where the guys go down under the tunnel. Oh, and we go around the school. Usually we start at five, and by the time we were running back to the circle, it'd be about eight fifteen. And you know they tell us we have about fifteen minutes to get showered and get to class. If we're late to class, we shall repeat um, that that motion. But Tower London can include anything around the school. One time, our whole team, including coaches. How to do the Tower of London? Coaches. Yes, you heard that correctly, coaches. We started at the top where the uh, T was. We rolled down that T, climbed onto the field, rolled all the way 100 yards, bear crawled up that, and then started our run around the school. And so he used to ride around with our trainer in a uh, car. They had a movie in the back, and, and they'd be in the back just watching a movie as we, as we ran what around. What movie was it? I didn't get to see, brother. I was too far in the back. I didn't. I was just trying to make it. So <laughs> you were just you know, trying knew, to breathe. You were just yeah, trying to there breathe. Was a couple man. people I knew not to stand by. Uh, Crab was one. 
uh, and it, it, was, uh, it was about two other folks I knew to get away from because eventually <laughs> they're going uh, – another one's Eddie Britton. Uh, he's going to get chewed out, huh? Yeah, you will get uh, flamed up. And so um, I, I know my greatest story of all time is, is uh, Ed, Eddie B. Um, you know, we we had to go as a, as a group for getting in trouble, which for us receivers is daily. Um, so we just knew to show up at five to get ready for our punishment. But uh, one day he had skipped class and Leach had had enough of his grades were a little low. So it was, we had practice and it was snowing. And so uh, we uh, go up and eat in the stadium is where our press box was mm-hmm. before they, before you spoil kids, got the new one. Uh, we were up there eating in the, you know, uh, up there in the top, we had to take all these stairs, but uh, I look down there and I, I hear everybody laughing. I'm like, what, what's so funny? Why is everybody laughing? This dude, Leach, had this dude sitting in the center of the football field doing homework in the snow. Uh, he had <laughs> and it was the greatest. <laughs> like, we took pictures and laughed. <laughs> like, I was like, dude, I will never skip class again. If this is what, <laughs> this is what we're coming to, like, I will never <laughs> skip class. This dude was out there in ice cold snow in the middle of the field by himself. <laughs> And the worst part was it got dark and Leach cut on the lights. I was like, that's that's Leach to a T, though. Like, the man Jeez, cut on the lights. Man, field. come on. I was crying. Like, that's that was, man, that was a, a great story. We laughed for so long, man. But that's just, I mean, that's just him. I know me personally, I got mad my freshman year. I used to drop the ball on purpose because they would never uh, let me play. Uh, you know, so I always felt me and Eddie B always, you know, uh, we're battling. And I was like, man, I'm better than him, coach, you know. Uh, and they're just like, well, show us. And I'm like, I show you every day. Like, I yeah, catch, yeah, yeah. I catch pretty good, you know. And so uh, I got to the point I'd pout sometimes and I'd run around, get open and drop it on purpose and just look at him. And Leach is, you know, I can't repeat what Leach said, but, you know, basically said stop being soft um, <laughs> in nice terms. And so um, one of my greatest stories, I started this whole thing and my teammates hated me for a long time for this, but I did that a couple of times. So Leach was like, okay, you're going to waste my time during practice. I'm going to waste your time after practice. So when the coaches watch film, he was like, Hey, you need to stay with me and watch film. So he would make me stay and watch that practice because I was out Man. there. Dropping. And watch yourself. And watch yourself. And he would always say, he'd be like there. He's like, um, who is this sorry kid? He'd be squinting. He's like, who is that sorry kid? That soft, da, 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 da. And I'm looking, I'm like, you know, I'm half paying attention. I'm just sitting in there like they have paying attention. I'm looking, I'm like, that's me, coach. He's like, I know, that's the problem. I'm looking at him. I know, look at this. And it called me out. And so then it started a trend. Whoever had a bad practice that day would have to watch film with Mike. And it was, it was, it was greatness Man. looking back on it. But they were so pissed. But I was just, you know, it was young, young and dumb trying to prove a point. Like, okay, you don't want to play me? I'll show you why. Show Even you. if the point was stupid, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair, man. I, I I love this one, man. Like, I think people are gonna really enjoy getting to hear your stories because, like, again, it's a firsthand account. Like, yeah, I think you said it best to open the podcast. Like, there's people out there that got to meet Mike Leach. There's people that were surrounded by Mike Leach, and you were surrounded by him for four years. And um, Mike Leach will live on through guys like you because. If it wasn't for him, you probably wouldn't be where you're at in Level End right Ain't now. No probably, brother. Ain't no uh, problem. And, and I, Lincoln Riley wouldn't be where he is. Lincoln Riley's got one of the craziest stories where he was a quarterback on the team. Mike said, "Hey, you," in, in no uncertain terms, "Hey, you suck. Do you want to be a GA?" And Lincoln got pissed for a day, and then he was back as a GA, and the rest is history. He's got a really nice mansion. You want to know what's even crazier? What's up? His brother got the same story. There you go. <laughs> Shout out to the Riley family. Man. Shout out to the Mike Riley. Lee changing it. There's Love another guy, people. Garrett. Garrett's yeah. got a connection to him too. Um, Love yeah, Garrett. man. I Love I Blake. think that's the coolest thing. And I think I, well, I, I think this is directed at you, but also just the teams you were on and just that era of Texas Tech football. I think I speak for every alumni, just Texas Tech fan in general, when I say thank you, man. Like in terms of, I know y'all are getting to play the, you know, game of your dreams, right? But like, the way y'all handled yourselves and the way that you got to be a part of this just like revolution in football and you guys did it to perfection was a testament to you guys. Y'all should get credit, but I think y'all would give the biggest credit 
to Mike Leach in terms of just changing y'all's lives for the better. And I think really just changing college football for the better. It, it really does suck. It hit, it hit hard yesterday. Um, for me, I can only imagine for you and people close to him, but I'm glad we could tell all these stories. I know everybody's going to enjoy this podcast. Um, and I can't wait to hear the feedback and all the other stories that trickle in because of, oh, you made me remember of this story or whatnot, yeah. right? Like, that's the best part of this. And I think it, you know, there's a time and place to mourn. And I think we're still in that period. But when you talk, when you mourn, that doesn't mean you can't speak of the good times that you had with that person. Um, and I think that that's the biggest thing that um, we need to learn. And also this, also this, there's a time and a place to hold a grudge. Shout out to Texas Tech as an institution. I know that didn't end on good terms, but damn it, clap to you guys for putting up Swing the Sword at Jones AT&T Stadium. It was classy as hell, and that's what Texas Tech is all about. There's a few bad apples in every fan base, but damn it, when it comes down to it, Red Raider Nation is a family, and you've seen it and then some in these past few days. So for Lyle, I'm RC. We'll end it there. Lyle, where can the people follow you at on Twitter, my guy? Hey, before y'all follow me, like I said, I just want to, you know, uh, one last time or not one last time, but on the podcast, just, you know, from 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 all of us, Mike, you know, and, and your family, we appreciate you. Love you, man. Uh, we wouldn't be here without you. Um, like I said, man, eyes was heavy all day yesterday, man, but we we uh, can't thank you enough. And I, I know I could speak for my brothers and, and people that's been a part, man. We forever love you, forever indebted, ever grateful, forever grateful. And just want to take that time to say, man, I thank you, thank you, thank you. But you can follow me at uh, Coach L-L-E-O-N-G. You can follow me at RCMB323. I I don't don't have an outro for that. I think Lyle covered it really well. (laughs) I think think there's two words, really three words we can say um, to end the podcast. For Lyle, I'm RC, and most importantly, thank you, Coach.